Alrighty, so for today's Nostalgic Rewind, I'm talking about Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor. As a fan of the Lord of the Rings and other Tolkien work, this was definitely an exciting game for me. The game released in 2014, which is the year I graduated from high school. And at that time, I still hadn't bought a new console, but I did see they were going to release it for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One at the same time. And as a side note, this was at an awkward time where studios either didn't want to or couldn't outright stop production on the games for the PS3 uh, and Xbox 360 and had to kind of try to get make games for both the last gen and current gen. But you could see that they were not wanting to do that for long. When the game released on 360, which is what I bought it for, it was atrocious. The graphics were poor, the stability was poor, and yet you paid maybe $10 less than on the Xbox One version. The same happened with Wolfenstein The New Order when I bought it. However, I did eventually get it for Xbox One, and I was blown away by how beautiful the graphics were when I played it finally on the newer console. What honestly shocked me about this game is that it was made by Monolith Productions, and when I think of the main games I think of, from Monolith is Condemned, uh, Criminal Origins, and Bloodshot, and Fear 2. And so it was intriguing for me to see how they would go from horror games and like a horror shooter to a fantasy sandbox melee game. The world is large. I wouldn't say it's open world. It's more of a sandbox game. Limited open world, basically. Even with that being said, though, there are many filler areas, and there's not really anything to do or see. Um, the game has a very classic open world type gameplay, basically like a Ubisoft game. There are towers that you can find, unlock, these open up the map, let you see more objectives, and you can fast travel. There are little puzzle items and plants you can pick up, side objectives, side quests. The game lets you also choose between kind of going with combat through stealth or just full on combat. You can do stealth kills, sneak around, or you can do brutalized kills and make enemies aware of you, uh, but also afraid of you. You have your primary sword, a short sword, and the short sword is used more for the stealth kills. You can also use your bow and do things such as teleporting kills, teleporting strikes. You can use arrows to shoot down items such as beehives for distraction, meat uh, to get the wargs to come and attack everybody. You can also upgrade your weapons by upgrading how many ruins can be in each weapon. Then you can unlock powerful runes based off the bosses you kill. You can also upgrade your character so that certain movesets can finally be unlocked. Since it is a game from 10 years ago, I'm not sure how fair this criticism can be, but, I mean, 2014, I mean, I think games were doing pretty well then. I just feel the game can become repetitive very, very quickly. Once you unlock the ability to stagger an enemy and do a flurry kill and at the end automatically kill them, or even blind enemies, you can basically get the same combat method going. It can make the game slightly boring to play after a long period of time. However, the game offsets this by having bosses be immune or scared to specific attacks. Some bosses might be invulnerable to arrows or to your stun. Some may be afraid of wargs or if they're about to die, they're, they don't want to die. And so they'll come back with full health and basically do double damage, it seems. This helps separate each boss to an extent and make them feel somewhat different. That leads into the big gameplay mechanic of Shadow of Mordor itself, the Nemesis system. The Nemesis system allows orcs and Uruks to remember interactions with you, the player, in combat. If you fight an Uruk and they flee, they might lose strength points, but they can't ever forget how you embarrass them. And so sometimes the how they come back might be like sneaking up on you and they find clever ways to come back at you. If an Uruk kills you, because you can die and the game remembers it, they can gain a strength point and they might have more guards and just become more higher in the ranks because of it. 
Some even come back from the dead and keep chasing you relentlessly. And what I mean by that is that in about a two hour time frame, I kept killing the same guy over and over again. And somehow he kept coming back nonstop and I kept cutting his head off and he kept coming back and it just kept saying whatever, whatever, the unkillable or something. And I was like, I, I'm not understanding. Is this a joke or is this like actually bugged? It's a fun system, and it was expanded, in my opinion, a lot more in the second game. Lastly, the story is set in between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and from what I can tell, it's technically within the film universe. There's um, some stuff that you see in this game and the next game that insinuates that it's in the movie universe. You play as Talion, a ranger of the Black Gate of Mordor. After a tragedy that happens to you, you're now infused with the soul of an ancient elf. Together, you both have to defeat the army of Sauron and give vengeance for your family, but also to figure out the memories of the elf that you've now been intertwined with. And when I think of giving this game a rating, I wrote down a 7 out of 10. I don't think that's wrong. Um, it's above average for sure. It's a fun game. Uh... Especially if you if you love you know Tolkien's work and stuff. I mean, just the world. I think you'll have a fun time. It can it can be a little rough to finish. Um, I you know I tried doing all the side stuff, but it just got to a point where I just got a little tired of it. I was like, ah, it's just not doing doing much for me. It's basically just hit the same combo counter, hit the same combo counter, just over and over again. It's always on sale on Steam. And I think you you can even get like this and the second game together for like 10 bucks now. So that's always nice. But that's about it for all I have. Um, I guess I did forget to mention you can do execution kills if your combo meter goes up. Or you can blind enemies. Those do help in combat. Um, they kind of, I guess, even out the gameplay a little bit. But enough about that. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I appreciate you watching. And as always, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, anything. If you, you know, feel nostalgic about this game like I did. And, you know, because that's why I wanted to replay it. Let me know in the comments. I love the engagement. I like talking to people. So, you let me know. But for me, that's going to be it. I'm out.